Today we won't hold you long. We want to talk about the scripture that was written out here in Esther chapter 4, verse 11. You, re you recall, of course, in the book of Esther that she was chosen out of all of these women to be his queen. Mm -hmm. right. You would call her today Miss, Miss Persia. <laughs> she would have a banner around her, her body said Miss Persia. And so as she was chosen, the, there was a man named ha Haman, and Haman was a, a villain in this plot. <laughs> and Haman hated the Jews. And there was one named Mordecai who was Esther's family member. There's some debate whether he's an uncle or a cousin, but he's some kin to Esther. And as Haman would go through the gate, Mordecai wouldn't bow down. Everybody would bow down to Haman except Mordecai. Because Mordecai was a Jew. He was a child of God. And children of God, we don't bow down to anybody except God. And so this thing just made him so upset and it made him so mad. So he came up with a decree to the king that we should get rid of all the Jews. He didn't want to just get rid of Mordecai. He wanted to get rid of all the Jews and he was willing to pay for it. And so they, the king gave him his signet ring and he wrote a decree that all the Jews on a certain day were going to die. Oh, and you God. know the law of the Persians, once it's written, it's written, it can't be changed. And so Mordecai was in sackcloth and ashes. He went out to the gate and he was mourning and, and Esther saw him and, and he sent the note into Esther and this is what Esther said to him. He wanted Esther to, to, to talk to the king about this atrocity. Mm -hmm. So in Esther chapter 4 verse 11, Esther said, all the king's servant and the people of the king's province do know that whosoever, whether they man or woman, shall come unto the king into the inner court, who is not called, there is one law of his to put him, him to death, right. except to whom the king hold out his golden scepter. Now if you went out there and you weren't supposed to be there, he could put his hand down, you were going to die. Right. Or he could put his scepter out and you were going to live. So she's saying, it's not my turn to go and talk to the king. And so she said, this is the way it is. So then it goes on to say, and that I, that I may live, but it ha I have not been called to come unto the king for 30 days. And they told this to Mordecai, Esther's words. Then Mordecai commanded to Esther, think not with thyself that thou should escape the king's house more than all the Jews, for thou altogether hold if thou altogether hold thy peace this time, then shall the enlargement and the deliverance, deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But but thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed, and who knoweth whether or not thou hast come to the kingdom for such a time as this. He said, You can't hide. You, you, you're in the king's palace, but you can't hide even though you're, the, you're a Jew and it's going to come. But God is going to deliver his people one way or another. Right. And that's what I want you to understand today. God is going to, we're going to win. We might be going through some atrocities. And we might see the whole world is on fire. Yeah. And we can see how this pandemic is scaring people. But in the end, God is going to win. Yeah. And you have to stick with God. Yeah. And so what he said was, it was for such a time as this. Mm. That's what we're in now. Such a, Such a time as this. Who knew that it was going to be a pandemic? Right. In the beginning of 2020, right. we had plans. You know, we're going to the graduation. We, we're meeting together. The congregation is growing. Now we're sitting six feet apart. Mm -hmm. But right. God put you here. And God put me here. And God put all of us here for such a time as this. Yeah. We're going to have to stand up. Amen. And we're going to have to be what we, God would need us to be. He didn't put us here arbitrarily. It's not like we just happen to be here. God put you here and God put me here all right. for such a time as this. Mm -hmm. Now you can see it all through the Bible. You know what he did? He brought Moses to Pharaoh in Exodus 5 one, for such a time where he could tell Moses to let my people go. Amen. You know what he did? He, took, he brought the apostles to the high priest in Acts chapter 5 and verse 28 and they told the high priest it's better to obey God than obey, obey men. Yeah. You know what he did? He brought Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to the fiery furnace. Okay. And they told the king, he said, it's not worse for us to answer you, O king. Yeah. We will not bow down to your golden statue. Right. God put every people where he want them for such a time as he want them there. And that's what we're in now. Mm -hmm. We're in such a time as this. Not only that, you know what he did? He brought Daniel to the lion's den. Mm -hmm. So 
They said, well, if you if you pray, then we're going to put you in the lion's den. Yes. And Daniel opened his windows and bowed down toward Jerusalem right. every day like he always did. Right. Because he was brought there for such a time as this. Yes. Now, I don't know what it is about us, but it's something. People need Christians. Yes. People need the light. Yes. We need to stand up. I know it's scary. I know it's all scary, but we still need to stand up right. in this time. Because it's, we're going through something. People are just gone crazy. <laughs> this world is gone crazy. And guess what they need? They need the light. They need Christians like you and me. You know what he did? He brought Joseph to Potiphar's house so he could tell Potiphar's wife, you know, I can't commit this sin with you and against God. Right. He's put all of us in situations where we are going to have to stand up and we are going to have to be what God would have us to be. And it's not arbitrary. It's for such a time as this. And so when, he, when I look at this, he brought us into the kingdom. Yeah. You know, it's not accident that we're in the kingdom. We're all born again right. of the water and of the spirit. If you're a Christian, you've been born again right. of the water and of the spirit. And that's not accidental. Somebody said, well, what is the, what is the answer for the reason why I was born? That's something we think about. Mm -hmm. But what is the answer for the reason why you were born again? All right. It was for such a time as this. And he brought us into the kingdom, just like Esther. In Esther 4, 14, and who knoweth whether thou art coming to the kingdom for such a time as this? And Colossians 1, 12, giving thanks unto the Father which he hath made us meet and to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Yes, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. Right, we don't supposed to look like the world. We don't use that kind of language. We don't try to, we don't try to stab people in the back. We don't live like that. Yes, right, yes. And we have to realize we've been brought out of the darkness into the marvelous, into the marvelous light. Amen. That's kingdom principle. Brother Williams, in Acts chapter 9 and verse 15, do you know we, you have been chosen? You, you, know, you, you know, when we were little, we were on the basketball uh, court. Somebody said, well, I want you to play, and I want you to play, and I want everybody to be chosen. You never wanted to be the last yeah, person chosen. Right. You always wanted to be the first person chosen. But well, we have been chosen. And in Acts chapter 9, verse 15, what did he say there, brother? Where the Lord said unto him, go thy way, uh -huh. for he is the chosen vessel yeah. unto me. Yeah. God right. chose, chose uh, Christ. In 2 Timothy 2, 4, brother Williams. 2 Timothy 2, 4, what does he say there? No man that war can entangle himself with the affairs of this life. Right. That he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. See, when you're a soldier, you don't get caught up in the world. You don't, you're not worried about your life bill and your water bill mm. and, and, and your taxes. What you're worried about is that person that's in front of you that's trying to take advantage of you. Mm. But we have been chosen to be in the army of the Lord. Right. And it's for such a time as this. God knew when we were going to come around, and God knew what God has it all together. We're the ones who are going to have to get on board. And I know it's tough. I know we're going through some ups and downs. The air conditioner's not working. <laughs> but we still love the Lord for such a time as this. In, uh, in 2 Thessalonians 2.14, whereunto he called us by our, called up you by our gospel. That's how we're chosen. Whoever obeys this word, that's who God chose. Mm -hmm. It's not like he's saying, you I want and you I don't want. And I'll take you, 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 but I don't want you. No, he said, whoever obeys this word, those are the ones who are going to be chosen. Right. And it's the same for you. It's the same for me. It's the same. If God let you get away with something that I can't get away with, would he be a just God? It has to be the same for all of us. Right. And it's the gospel. It's the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Right. We have been chosen. But you know, ever since the garden, and somebody trying to take us out. Mm -hmm. yes. Ever since the Garden of Eden, you know, since they said, bite of this fruit and they bit of this fruit, and God, God said, now I'm going to bruise your heel, you're going to bruise my head, I'm going to bruise your head, and you're going to bruise my heel. It's been a battle ever since. And what did he say in Esther chapter 3, verse 13? And the letters were sent by the post into all the king's providence to destroy and to cause the parish of all the Jews. Now, he was only mad with one of them. But he wanted to kill them all. Yeah. You know what he was trying to do? He was trying to destroy Jesus from coming into this world. 
If all the Jews would have been destroyed, you know, there wouldn't have been Jesse, there wouldn't have been David the king, there wouldn't have been Joseph, there wouldn't have been Joseph the mother, the, hu the husband of Mary who had Jesus. None of that would have happened because all the Jews would have been destroyed. And that's what Satan has in mind. Right. Satan, he wants to destroy the spiritual house. Right. He wants to destroy all of us who are in this house, who are standing up for the Lord, who are coming out here with masks on and barely can breathe, Amen. and who are trying to worship God in spirit and in truth. He's trying to destroy all of us. Man. And I'm trying to tell you, we're here not by accident. We're here for pur on purpose for such a time as this. Oh, it's always been that way. You recall in Exodus uh, 1 verse 16 when Pharaoh said, when you do the office of the midwife to the Hebrew women and see them upon the stool, if a son, you shall kill him. But if it's a daughter, you shall let her live. Satan has been trying to get rid of God, cease forever. And he's still doing it today. He'll have us mad at each other. He'll have me mad with Brother Walker. Yeah. He'll have me mad with Brother Kevin. Oh, what the dumbest things. And trying to break us all up. Be wise. Beware of the wives of, of the devil. Don't get mad over every little thing. Sometimes it's an accident. Sometimes somebody may not have meant to bump into you. <laughs> We have to learn that Satan ploy is to break us all up. It's always been that way. Right. You recall in Matthew 2, verse 16, when Harris said, I want to worship the child. Go find the child and bring him to me, because let me know where he is, so I want to worship him. You know what Harris wanted to do? He wanted to kill Jesus. And in Matthew 2, verse 16, and he slew all the children who were in Bethlehem and all the coast thereof from two years mm -hmm. and old, old, older two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. He's always been trying always. to get us out of the kingdom. But not only that, we came to such a time as this because he has given us a voice. And you know what we have to do? We have to use it. Oh, you know, we see things are wrong and we won't say a word. We know homosexuality is wrong. We know all these things in the world are wrong. But we'll sit back and we won't, because we don't want to be ostracized. Hey. And we don't want anybody to, to call me out. Hey, I, hey, I just want to blend in. You can't blend in. Right. Because you were brought here for such a time as this. All right. And you're going to have to stand up. And I'm going to have to stand up. And we're all going to be held accountable yes, for what, what God has given us. Right. He's given us a family. He's given us food on our table. We still have jobs. We still, and you think you can stay home and think, well, everything's going to be all right, God. God understands. Yes, sir. It's going to come a time. You've got to use your voice. Absolutely. And what he said in Esther 414, he says, if thou altogether hold thy peace at this time, then shall the enlargement and the deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. God's people are going to win. Either you're going to stand up with them or you're going to stand up against them. Yeah. But God's people are going to win. Right. And you were brought here and I was brought here for such a time as this. Right. So we need to get on board and realize yeah. we're going to have to open our mouths and we're going to have to be what God would have us to be. Also in, in uh, Acts chapter 18 verse 9, then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by the vision, be not afraid, but speak and hold not thy peace. Yes. For I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee or hurt thee, for I have much people here. You know, God wants us to realize that it's more than just me. We got brothers and sisters. You can call me up. You can call Brother, brother Daniels up. You can call. We got people who you can count on, especially during this pandemic. We need to be in contact with one another. We need to call one another and check on them. You have older, uh, old elder, elderly people in here. We need to be in contact. We have a voice. Let's use it. He says in, in uh, Exodus, I mean, I'm sorry, Ephesians 4.15, Brother Williams. Ephesians 4.15. But speaking the truth in love, mm -hmm. may grow up into him in all things. God said you got to speak the truth, but you got to do it in love. Mm -hmm. Right. You don't want to berate somebody. How would you like somebody berating you and belittling you and putting you down? Well, I got the truth. Yeah, you have the truth, but you don't beat people over the head with it. You speak the truth in love. Mm -hmm. But if you don't speak, God will find somebody else to speak. But God's going to hold you accountable because he brought you here for such a time as this. I'm going to have to stand up and be, and be accountable. You know why? Because you have the antidote. Mm -hmm. You have the antidote to hatred. You have the antidote to sin. Mm -hmm. 
You have an antidote to backstab. Don't you get tired of people stabbing you in the back? I was walking with one brother. He was telling me that a co-worker of his, he was named, he was known for stabbing, talking to people in the face and stabbing them in the back. Oh, Don't you get tired of that stuff? But you have the antidote, and you have to speak up. You have the antidote to murder. You have the antidote to cheating. You have the antidote to false doctrine. Right. You know, I was listening to something online, and it was kind of like a nice little sermon. And at the end, they said, now say this prayer mm -hmm. and ask the Lord to come into your heart. It's just one problem. That's not in the Bible. Right. And there's people going around thinking they're going to be saved because they said a sinner's prayer. There's no such thing as a sinner's prayer in the Bible. Right. He said, he that believe it and is baptized shall be saved. Right. And you have the answer to that. Yeah. And there's people going to hell because they believe that they've been saved because been saved they stood up and said, Lord, I am a sinner and, and I want you to come into my heart. Nowhere the Bible says that. The Bible says he that believe it and is baptized shall be saved. Amen. And you have the answer though. But you got to speak. You got to open your mouth because you've been brought here for such a time as this. Right. We're going to have to stand up, brothers right. and sisters. You think it's easy on me? It's not easy on any of us. Right. But we still got to worship God in spirit and in truth. Yes. I'm not saying don't wear your mask. Now, see, because I always have to, I always have to put a disclaimer out. <laughs> I'm not saying don't wash your hands. I'm not saying don't take precautionary measures. But you still have to find a way to speak for the Lord, because we are His words. All right. You know, it said in Acts 9:29, what we do is speak boldly. Not only do we speak. We speak boldly. And in Acts 9, 29, and he spake boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, disputed against the Grecians. And in Acts 13 and verse 46, but then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. And in Acts, I mean, Philippians 1, 4, having a doctrine, having become confident by my chains and are much more bold to speak the word without fear. And in Acts 14, verse 13, long time therefore of bold, they speak it boldly. And see, when you have the truth, you can speak boldly. Right. It's not like, this is not ambiguous. There is such a thing as the truth. The word of God is true. Amen. You know, we might be able to speak about other issues, and you might have your opinion, and I might, might have my opinion, and, and we may never agree. But when it comes to the word of God, the word is true. Amen. And you should have the confidence. Amen. And the boldness to say, well, that's what you think, but this is what God says. Mm -hmm. Because you don't have a heaven or a hell to put me in. Right. I got to go with what God said. Right. And the Bible says we're going to be judged by the word. He that rejected me and receiving not my word have one to judge him. The same word which I have spoken, the shame shall judge me in the last day. Right. What's going to judge us is this word right here, what he has spoken. So don't come telling me, but well, God told me to tell you. No, 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 I'm stick with what the Bible said. And what I'm saying is, we have a voice, and we are going to have to use it, and we got to speak boldly. We got to speak confidently. Now, I'm not saying putting people down, and I'm not saying being mean to people, but I am saying speaking the truth and love, but you got to do it with some confidence. Right. Confidence breeds confidence. Lack of confidence, breathe. You ever thought you let somebody invest your money and they're not sure how they're investing their money? <laughs> no, you're not touching my money. You might, get brother, you might get this brother over his money, but you won't get mine. And one more thing I want you to know. We were brought here for such a time as this because one person can make a difference. Yeah. You think, well, who am I? I'm only one person. Esther was only one person. And Esther went in to the king. And Esther said it was more than, it was Haman. Mm -hmm. He is the one that's trying to kill us all. And Haman was killed on the very gallows that he had built to kill Mordecai. Mm -hmm. But it was only one person. And she went in and she took a stand. So one person can make a difference. Make a difference. Right. And the Bible is clear when he tells me in 1 Peter 3 verse 1, Likewise you wives, be in subjection to your own husband that if any may obey not the word, that they also, might, without a word, might be won by the conversation of the wife, mm -hmm. by how the wife live her life and go about it and being, still being respectful to her husband and still living right. She can win her husband. One person can make a difference. Right. It says, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. People are watching you. People are watching me. People watching all of us. 
Hey, you've been home. We, we gonna, what are we going to stay home for a year? <laughs> what are we going to stay home for two years? All right, and then we go with that next door neighbor and say, well, we want you to come to church. And they say, well, you stayed home for two years. Yeah. You say, you're a Christian. I want to go where you go because you stayed home for two years. <laughs> Everybody believe me, somebody's watching you. Look, I, I look out the window sometimes, I see people walking their dog. I'm thinking, they don't even know <laughs> that, that I'm watching them. Yeah. That's what happens in our life. People right. are watching you. And as a Christian, we have to live in a way that we can win people. Mm -hmm. One person can make a difference. What about a, a father? Can a father make a difference in his children's life? Mm -hmm. The Bible says that you fathers provoke not your child to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Right. Yeah, but yeah, but Lord, I I I I, I took them to uh, Miami University, University of Miami. I made sure that they had enough money for the tuition, Lord. I made sure they wore Jordans yeah. or LeBron James. Yeah. I made sure they they had the latest fashion. I made sure that. But did you raise them All right. in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord? Yeah. One person can make a difference, but you got to do it God's way. Yeah. Because when it's all said and done, when you stand in front of the Lord, he's not going to say, well, what school did you send your child to? Today? He's going to say, did you bring them up like I told you, Brian? Right. Because that's important. Because then your grandchild will get that. And then your great-great-grandchild will get it. And on, so on and so on and so on down the line. You know, I know we, we know that education is, is important. I'm not... I'm not diminishing that, but I'm saying there's something more important. That's the word of God. Amen. And one person can make a difference. Amen. And we've been sat here for such a time as this. And we're going to have to stand up. In Acts 17 and verse 16, Paul went into Athens. One man, you know, all his friends, they couldn't come. And he said, well, you, you guys hurry up and get here. But he went into Athens. Athens was a, was a, was a, was a big Philosophy, philosopher town. It was where a lot of educators were and a yeah. lot of high thinkers. Right. And he went in there among them and he sat down among them and he just started telling them about Jesus Christ. He said, one day I was on the road and I was on the road and then a light shined upon me yeah. and I looked up and I said, who art thou, Lord? He yeah. said, this is Christ whom you persecute. And he said, I started preaching the gospel. That's all we need to tell them. Yeah. Tell them about the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus yeah. Christ. In Acts 17, verse 16, now, while Paul waited for them in Athens, his spirit was stirred in him, and when he saw the city wholly given to idols, they were following false gods, mm -hmm. the whole city. All right. You mean to tell me one person to make a difference in a city like that? Mm -hmm. Well, what happened? When in Acts, in Acts 17, verse 34, Paul went in and he spoke to them at the Areopagus. And when they heard him speak of the resurrection, they didn't want to hear anymore. But it says in verse 34, however, some men join him Amen. and believe among them Dionysius, the Are Areopagus, and the woman of Demarius, and other with them. Somebody heard in one person. Mm -hmm. You might not get everybody, but maybe you can get one visitor like what Brother Thomas brought in. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you can get somebody else. Just speak the word and truth. All right. Because you know why? We were brought here for such a time as this. Yes, and I'm trying to tell you, we got to do it, brother. Mm -hmm. God's going to hold us accountable for that, brother. Mm -hmm. Because God, the gospel is the power of God and salvation. It's not me. It's not brother with. It's God's word. Mm -hmm. And God's word is going to hit what God's trying to hit. Mm -hmm. Some people looking for it, and some people aren't. We're trying to find the ones who mm -hmm. want the word. Mm -hmm. But you got, to, you got to realize one person can make a difference. Brother with you. And 1 Peter 2, 12. How should we how should we live in 1 Peter 2 12? Having your conversation honest right. among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, uh -huh. they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. See, people are gonna talk about you, but they see how you're living. Mm -hmm. See, so your life can't match the, 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 the derogatory things that they're saying. So having your life right, it's going to stop a whole lot of people. From, and then you know who you're going to glorify? You're going to glorify God in the day of visitation. All right. Because God sees us, and God knows how we're living. And you can't stop people from talking. Right. No matter what you do. Well, Brother Jackson shouldn't have worn a blue shirt. He should have worn this. <laughs> or you should have did this. You should have turned right instead of turning left. Why did you? It's always somebody mm -hmm. disgruntled with what you're doing. Mm -hmm. 
But you can't worry about that because you were brought here for such a time as this. Yes. And one person can make a difference. Don't worry about the naysayers. Don't worry about the people who say you can't do something. I never would have thought I was going to be up here being a preacher. Yeah. You know what I wanted to be? I wanted to be a bus driver. <laughs> I saw them great high bus drivers and they had that gray uniform and they had that change thing on the side and they had that hat. I said, that's what I want to grow up to be. Little did I know I was going to be a preacher. But what I'm trying to tell you is you don't know what you can do until you do the best you can and God will bless you to do the rest. Oh, we can make, one person can make a difference. The Bible tells me in Matthew 5, 14, you are the light of the world. This world need, look, look, look at your television. Does this world need light? Yeah. Every major city in America, this world, this world needs some light. Yeah. There are police officers. Not all police officers are bad now. But there are some police officers. This whole world needs light. And guess who the ones are going to shine? You and I. Know why? Because we were brought here for such a time as this. And I'm asking us to do what God brought us here to do. Amen. Matthew 5, 16. Let your light so shine right. before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. They're not going to give you the credit. They're going to give God the credit. Amen. And don't you go around trying to take the credit from God. Amen. Well, see what I've done and how good I've been. No, you haven't been that good. <laughs> We've all made mistakes now. Amen. Don't get too big. I'm telling you what the old folks used to say. Don't get too big for your riches. <laughs> That's what it's all about. We have to let our light shine. So this is it. I may not be able to do everything, but I can do something. Amen. And I'm asking you tonight. I mean tonight. <laughs> I'm asking you this morning. You were brought here for such a time as this. All right. We need to be about it. Be about the Lord's business. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, we were brought here into the kingdom for such a time as this. Yeah. We were given a voice. But such a time as this. And we realize that one person can make a difference yes, can. for such a time as this. Mm -hmm. If you're not a Christian, you have to hear his word and believe what he says. And you have to repent. And you have to confess with the mouth that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Mm -hmm. And oh yeah, you have to be baptized for the remission of your sins. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know people say, well, just say this prayer. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know people say, well, well, just let the Lord come into your heart. But the fact that the matter is, Jesus said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Mm -hmm. And in Matthew 28, 18, he said, all power is given unto me. Go ye therefore teach all nations, baptizing them. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Who's going to go teach our nations? That's us. You know what? We're here now. God put us here where he wanted us right now. Oh, is this world perfect? Absolutely not. But we're trying to make it to heaven. We're trying to get out of here, man. We're trying to get further than Fort Lauderdale, further than Houston, further than Minnesota. We're trying to make it to heaven. Yes, man. And you got to stand up for the Lord and be what the Lord would have us. I have, we all have a responsibility because God didn't have us here arbitrarily. God put us in a specific place Amen. at the specific time for such a time as this. Amen. And the question is whether or not you'll stand up. God's people are going to win. God is going to win. Mm -hmm. The question is will you be with him or will you be against him? That's the only question for such a time as this. Maybe there's some here today that's not a Christian. You have to hear his word and believe what he says. And you have to repent. You have to confess with the mouth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Yes, if you are a Christian and you stop, stop living right. Keep in mind, eyes are watching you. Mm -hmm. Eyes in your own house. Little children, they watch. Neighbors, they watch. Co-workers, they watch. You know, uh, classmates, they watch. We're on display. And we've brought here for such a time as that. So let that be known as together we stand and sing a song of invitation. Bye, bye.